Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ServiceNow 911. In today's video, we discuss the complete process of incident management. This is one of the very important ITL process and you must be aware of the complete life cycle of incident management. So I have prepared few questions for you. These questions are these. We will discuss all these questions one by one with proper clarity and demo in the demo instance. So let us start the video with the very first question that is what is an incident? So I have opened this uh, direct definition an incident is an unplanned interruption or reduction in the quality of service that is something is broken or not working as expected. So you can say that whatever issues you are facing in order to complete your work okay in order to do something or anything in the company which is directly or indirectly hindering the business of the company is known as the incident. It can be a very small one like you are not able to send the email and it can be a big one like an outage which is impacting the entire business or the entire company okay so managing this incident from the creation till its closure is known as incident management it means that whatever the issue raised till the issue is resolved is known as incident management in your day-to-day -day life whenever you face an issue you have to contact the customer service team you have to contact the IT team so you are contacting n number of teams so all these incidents all these occurrences are known as incidents such as you are not able to open the email you are not able to send the email your ID card is not working the portal on which you are updating your details is not working so all these things you have to report somewhere right so whenever you are creating that request whenever you are contacting someone an incident will be placed on your behalf or you can do it directly so this is known as incident management and the definition of incident i hope it is pretty much clear now so now let me show you one incident okay this is my instance in this we have an application known as incident you see here you can click on open it will open you a list of all the incidents you see let me open this one this is how the incident form actually looks like it has all the details related to you related to your issue and who is resolving the issue okay you see this is the caller field this is the category this is the subcategory so why we have this categorization this categorization help in resolving the issue as soon as possible because based on these categorization we are able to assign the group in a very short span of time so all these categorization assignment everything is related to your company specifics it depends on company to company like how they are categorizing the things how many categories they have how many subcategories they have and how they are assigning their incidents to the assignment groups it may be possible that they are using automation thing or they are doing it directly like the self-service team like the customer service team or the service desk is doing all this manually okay so all depends on your company internal structure you see here priority it means how much priority is given to this incident the higher the priority greater will be the impact and greater is the urgency that's why the incidents with the higher priority will be resolved first okay will be given much more importance because they are impacting a larger unit of business they may cause a higher amount of loss of revenue okay based on impact and urgency the priority will be decided again this is the matrix like on what impact and urgency the priority will change okay as an administrator you have the option to make any type of changes here you have to provide your short description here you have to provide the description and as the incident move forward you have the option to write the work notes because somebody is working on it and they have to write the work notes if they need anything from you or any kind of information they want to share with you this is the related records because an incident can be connected to a problem an incident can be connected to a change okay and what is the relation between incident problem change we will see in different video when we discuss problem that will be more appropriate thing and finally we have this tab which is resolution information here once the issue is resolved the resolver group or the resolver person will have to provide the resolution code like what is the resolution code it is solved it is solved permanently it is solved remotely whatever option you have you can change you can select then they have to provide the resolution notes okay 
who is resolving it and what is the resolve date this will come automatically so finally this is the basic overview of an incident so let's go to the question number two that is who can create an incident so first and foremost the user that is the user who is facing the issue a user can be a simple employee from service tax a user can be an accountant a user can be the CEO of the company anyone who is in the company is a user and can create an incident okay second thing is service desk agent that is as I already mentioned when you call or when you write an email to your service desk team they can create the incident on your behalf after discussing the details with you they may call you or they may understand the issue directly from the emails which you sent they can create an incident on your behalf and last thing is colleagues if you're not available or if you're not able to open the incident by any mean your colleague that is uh, your friend in the company or your manager or your subordinate anyone can create incident on your behalf describing your issue and get it going so with this we complete this question who can create the incident now we come to the third question like how many ways are there to create incidents so there are n number of ways let me discuss one by one first one is self-service it means you are creating the incident by yourself and let me go to the instance here you see at the top there is an application known as self-service this self-service application is very important and it is available to the user irrespective of the role it means if you do not have any role or you are just a customer or you are admin or you are anybody this self-service application is available to you 24 7 rest all applications can be role specific but this self-service is without role it means it is available to everyone who has the account in ServiceNow instance so you have to come here under service catalog so what is the service catalog it is the list of all the services which is provided to an employee or provided to the organization by the organization you can see all the categories very well drafted here based on your company you may have different categories but here in this out of box system we have can be help you so generally most of the time we have can be help you category available okay and at the bottom you see create an incident so as we are creating the incident from self-service it does not have a number of fields okay very limited information is asked here only your urgency you have to provide your urgency and describe your issue that's it and then you have to click on submit let's say my issue is issue in access okay submit it is creating the incident you see an incident is created on your behalf the IT department will be in contact with you for further information right now we are seeing the self-service view of incident you see here this is the self-service view as this is a self-service view information is very much limited only we are seeing the caller the number of incident urgency what is the state of the incident and the short description because this is a self-service view the user may not have much role to see other fields okay so like this this is the very first option where we can create incident okay that is self-service second thing is ITL role as we discussed already like if you have ITL role or if you are from service test team you have the option to create the incident directly from the application you have the option to create from self-service as well but uh, people who have ITL role generally create the issue directly from the incident application you see this is the incident application you have to click on create new so now you have qualified role let's say you have an ITL role that's why you are see n number of fields here so here you see n number of fields you have to provide the caller subcategory I have explained all these things already to you okay all depends on the role what is your role you will see the things like that the last thing is inbound email action so this is nothing but uh, many time you have noticed that whenever you write an email to a particular email address the ticket will get created automatically this is something like that only we have the email address of this instance and if you send email to this particular instance an incident will be created automatically this is known as inbound email action let me show you you see this is the mailbox of this system let me click on received you see these all are the mails which are received I tested it for you okay 
and if I open this it will show you the email is received and the target incident that is the incident which is created within this system when I sent an email from this particular email ID that is opsingeditor at the rate gmail.com this is the recipient this is the body and this is the header so if the inbound email action is configured you have the option to create incident like this so where are inbound email actions you see under system policy emails inbound actions you see this is test inbound action this is on incident table that's what I have created so like this you can create your own inbound email action and create an incident with this we complete the third question that is how many ways we create an incident finally we come to the life cycle of an incident so what is the life cycle of incident so let me open one of the incident which is created already let's change the view of this incident let's go to the default view so right now you see the state of this incident is new and as soon as somebody start working on this incident whenever we have the assignment group ready some people from the assignment group will pick up the incident in that case the incident will go in the in progress state first of all let me complete this incident let's say hardware here because we have the issue to access right that is the access to particular hardware and let's provide one assignment group let's say hardware group is there I guess yes let me assign this to someone from the hardware group let's assign it to Beth let me save it now you see as soon as I assign the incident the state is changed to in progress it means the Beth that is from hardware group is now working on this incident so while working if Beth required any kind of input from your side or from any other team it means the Beth is not working it is waiting for some kind of input so in that case Beth will come to the incident and change the state to on hold and provide a work note here so Beth mentioned that I need more information about your issue please provide the serial number of the hardware okay and it changed the state and saved it so you see the incident is on hold now so tell Omen the saying that is the user that is the caller provide the details needed by Beth the incident will be on hold and tell the incident will be on hold at the bottom you see all the SLAs will be paused okay so this is demo so that's why we are not seeing much SLAs here but generally on hold will work like this only so once I provide the detail and Beth is satisfied with the answer she will be able to proceed and she'll change she will change the state to in progress again so this changing of states will take place until unless Beth gets an information from the user okay so finally once Beth is okay with the issue she can resolve the incident so once she resolves the incident she has to click on resolve but in order to resolve it you have to provide the resolution information you have to provide the resolution code whatever feels necessary and then provide the resolution notes so she said that updated the patch expected okay click on resolve you see the incident is resolved now we have two more states left right so after some time let's say 10 days the system will automatically close the incident so last state is cancelled so when the incident get cancelled it means uh, let's say I reported some issue but that issue is not an issue I reported it accidentally or or instead of creating a request I created an incident so in that case either the caller or the assigned to person can cancel the incident as well okay this is the meaning of cancel so this is the simple path of an incident if we scroll to the bottom we see SLA I already told you that it is upon your company's internal management or internal structure the SLA get attached and work accordingly and then we have the tab of affected CIs it means what CI get affected so in this I have not selected the CI but if I have to select the CI the CI will come here and get attached here okay one more important tab is child incidents so why do we have child incident so these child incidents helping managing the things let's say we notice the same issue again in particular device okay 
and in that case we created an instant but if I attach that instant as a child to this one it will be more helpful for the people who are looking after the incident okay it is again helpful in creating the problems because because the same issue is happening again and again it means there is some problem in the system we have to rectify the problem along with the resolving the incident so for such purpose for reporting purpose all these purposes are held with the respect to child incidents Along with that, you have all number of options here. You can create an outage directly from the incident. So if this incident is referring to a particular outage, you can create so. You can create a problem. What is a problem? We will discuss in next video. You can create a request as well. Okay. If you see this incident needs a request, in that case, you can create so. Or if you see this incident is not an incident but it is a request so as a user or as a service tax agent you can create request directly from here you can create child incident that is also possible you can create changes if this incident need some kind of change in the system you can create a change you can configure the change you can make the change and that change will be associated with this particular incident all these things are interrelated as we move forward with other processes we will understand the nitty gritty is behind instant problem and change. Apart from these, you can see all the basic options which you already know, like you can export, you can change the view, okay? You can see the history as well. So my dear friends, this is all about incident management. I have explained the basic, the fundamental of incident management to you. But in your organization, it is possible that you may see some kind of different thing in incident. You may have different categories, you may have different subcategories, you may have different states as well, okay? So all this is related to your company, but the basic fundamental is same. What is an incident? How we are tackling it? What is the procedure? Everything you know, you understand it properly. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.